So as many of you know, on Tuesday, the Senate reached a deal on phase four of the Corona stimulus package. And uh, predictably, Chuck Schumer and the Democrats got absolutely nothing. Now, I shouldn't actually say that they got nothing because they think that they got something. They think that there's victory in their defeat. Um, or at least that's what they're telling us, that they think they got something. But in actuality, this is embarrassing. And I think that this story, it's really forcing people to come to terms with the fact that we need a new explanation for the way that Democrats are governing. Because we can't just keep calling them incompetent if they never learn from their mistakes. We have to, at some point, assume malicious intent. We have to assume that maybe things are panning out exactly as they'd want them to pan out because it's not like they don't know how to play politics. We just saw the entire Democratic Party establishment coalesce around Joe Biden to crush the left. So they're strategic. They're savvy. They know how to play politics. It's just that in instances like this, maybe they're doing exactly as much as they think they need to do to appease their donors. So let's take a look at this. Jeff Stein of the Washington Post explains these were the things not expected to be included in the bill. Hazard pay for frontline workers, additional funding for states and cities, election security, which would probably include vote by mail because that would keep Americans secure during a pandemic, assuming it goes on until November. More oversight of the previous bailout, additional revenue for food stamps, a rent freeze, another stimulus check. I mean, you could make the case that they shouldn't agree to anything if all of these things are not included, especially after they just went along with a multi-trillion dollar bailout. I mean, I don't think people fully grasp the ramifications of that, right? So after they went along with that, either willingly or unwillingly to get people that $1,200 uh, check, I mean, I would not agree to anything if we didn't get at least four of these things. But let's just like take out one and really think through the importance. Let's think about election security and vote by mail. If this isn't something that gets codified into law by November, Democrats are basically throwing this election away. If the pandemic is still going to, you know, require us to self-quarantine. Because think about this, there's a growing contingent of the Republican Party, uh, their base in particular, that doesn't even believe in COVID-19. Like, put aside the people who think that we should sacrifice our lives for capitalism. There's people who just outright think it's a hoax. So if given the choice between staying home and, you know, playing it safe, not voting, or risking your life to vote in a pandemic in November, who's going to be, you know, the one who is hurt by this the most if we don't get vote by mail? Republicans are going to come out no matter what. They're going to vote for Republicans. But if Democrats don't get vote by mail... Do you honestly think that more rational people, theoretically speaking, are going to risk their lives? No, it's going to be the people who think that we should just allow the virus to wash over America. And uh, that's even if they believe it's true in the first place. So, like, do you understand if they don't get vote by mail and this pandemic persists until November, this election is a wrap. Democrats lose. And I mean, think about this, 100 million people didn't even vote in 2016. Republican voters will not be deterred because of COVID-19. So if you don't get this done, if you don't throw it into any bill, then, I mean, you're throwing this election away. But Chuck Schumer doesn't think, or he doesn't want us to think, that they didn't get anything because he tweeted out, the bill before us is an interim measure. It has hard-won provisions Democrats fought for, but it's a building block. In the weeks ahead, Congress must prepare another major bill, big, bold, and ambitious. So don't worry, guys. We know this bill isn't great, but in the next bill, it's going to be better. We promise. Now, the hard-won provisions that he's referring to here... I mean, these are objectively good things that are needed. Increased funding for hospitals, increased funding uh, to the tune of, I think, $25 billion for test kits for COVID-19. But imagine being naive enough to think that that's a victory that you won. This is something that Republicans need as well, right? They can't continue to look competent if they don't propose some sort of additional funding for hospitals, additional funding for test kits. So basically... What I can imagine happening is Mitch McConnell was probably trying to make a deal with Chuck Schumer and said, hey, look, 
we'll uh, we'll give you twenty five million for COVID funding, uh, test funding. And Chuck Schumer just thought that he won when Mitch McConnell was probably going to have to give some funding away anyway. Like they think that they won and they lost, but yet he's still thinking that we should appreciate all of the hard work that he put in when he rolled over and died immediately. Not once, but now twice. Or excuse me, uh, four times, because <laughs> what 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 uh, phase are we on now? This is phase four. I mean, this is just, it's genuinely embarrassing. And um, I want to go through what this contains here, because um, it really is, like, even what they managed to get here. If we're going to assume that they should take credit for the additional funding for hospitals and test kits, um, even what they got wasn't sufficient. So if you're just going to draw that line at, you know, hospital funding and test kits, why not get an adequate amount of funding? But they couldn't even get that. So as Owen Higgins of Common Dreams explains, the bill does include $321 billion for small businesses, $75 billion for hospitals, and $25 billion for coronavirus testing. But to center on budget and policy priorities, President Robert Greenstein, that's not enough. While providing needed support to small businesses and hospitals, the new COVID-19 package announced today falls short even as an interim measure. Failing to deliver crucial state and local fiscal relief and food assistance, Greenstein said in a statement Tuesday. Critics of the bill pointed out that House Democrats could have moved to pass their own bill addressing issues important to progressives. But did they choose to do that? No. So it doesn't matter that they have the House of Representatives. And they could do something like that. They could propose their own stimulus relief package and say, look, we just passed a clean bill that provides every single American $2,000 per month for the duration of this pandemic. And they could just hammer Republicans over and over again on every cable news show. Like they could easily do that and force the Republicans to actually give them this victory, even if they're taking the other shitty bailouts for large multi-billion dollar companies. But they won't even do the bare minimum. They won't even do the bare minimum. And what's insane to me is that after they passed that massive multi-trillion dollar bailout with the last bill, they went along with it with almost no oversight. They didn't even try to improve the oversight in this new package. They just threw their hands up, and rolled over and died again. And what's really astonishing is that after they got no oversight, they're not really trying to get any additional oversight. As staff writer for The Atlantic, Adam Sewer put it, Democrats in Congress are doing no oversight over Trump's mishandling of the pandemic and have handed Trump millions with no strings attached, but at least they're also caving on everything else. So in other words, they got no oversight of that multi-trillion dollar bailout last time, no oversight of that multi-trillion dollar bill at this time. And what did they get in exchange for giving up oversight? Nothing. Zero. Zero concessions. Nothing. Oh, excuse me. They got additional funding for hospitals and uh, COVID-19 test kits, something that is also mutually beneficial for Republicans as well. And, okay, I shouldn't actually say that they got no oversight because according to them, they have oversight that they're really proud of. So there's a five-person oversight commission, and there is, what, 262, I think, Democrats in the House of Representatives. So Nancy Pelosi is tasked with putting people on that commission. Um, she could have chose any one of these individuals. Who does she choose? Perhaps one of the least qualified members of the House of Representatives, freshman Congresswoman Donna Shalala, who doesn't have any expertise when it comes to the regulation of the financial services industry. On top of that, she is a criminal because she didn't disclose the sale of her stocks last year, which is a pretty brazen violation of the Stocks Act. And after Nancy Pelosi chose to name this crooked politician to oversee crooked industries, making an even bigger mockery of the so-called Oversight Commission, there were expectedly calls for Pelosi to replace her with anyone else. I mean, Nancy Pelosi literally has hundreds of options. Anyone she could replace Donna Shalala with. But what was her response when this huge corruption scandal broke out as she's going to oversee a multi-trillion dollar bailout? No, I'm not going to withdraw this nomination of Donna Shalala. What? Not joking. So as Roll Call reporter Chris Marquette tweeted, Speaker Pelosi will not withdraw her nomination of Representative Donna Shalala to the Congressional Oversight Commission 
after the Miami Herald reported she failed to disclose her stock transactions, a requirement for all members of Congress under the Stock Act. Drew Hamill, a spokesperson for Pelosi, said Congresswoman Shalala has the Speaker's complete confidence as she works to hold the administration accountable to the taxpayer through the CARES Congressional Oversight Commission. Since coming to Congress, Congresswoman Shalala has taken aggressive steps to avoid even the suggestion of a conflict of interest over her personal investments, Hamill said in an email. Representative Shalala has taken responsibility for her mistake in missing filings required under the Stock Act and has been working with the Ethics Committee to address this issue since she became aware of it, he added. There are no words to describe how absurd the situation is. And think of how brazen they are in trying to gaslight you. Like, this is gaslighting 101. They're peeing on your leg and they're trying to convince you that it's raining. So, in response to Donna Shalala not disclosing the sale of her stocks, which is illegal, mind you, they end up praising her, saying how moral and ethical she is because she doesn't want there to be a conflict of interest because she sold her stocks. No, you don't praise her in this circumstance. You lambast her. You punish her strip her of her committee assignments because she just broke the law, Nancy Pelosi, and now you're rewarding her with a seat on this toothless committee. I don't even know what to say, and I think that David Dan, journalist for The Intercept, put it best. 16 months of violating the law, but as soon as she was aware of doing it, a day before her spokesperson lied to me about it, she took action. Amazing. Yeah, it's so amazing. And now she's being praised. This is unbelievable. Like, this is things that you see in a movie. She can pick anyone else. I mean, it, it honestly doesn't matter. It's a simple gesture to your base to communicate to them that you still care about morals and ethics. Throw a fucking dart at the board. It doesn't matter. Pick anyone. But she won't do it. So, getting back to, you know, all of their incompetence this isn't just incompetence this may be malicious right it's incompetence at best maliciousness nefarious behavior that's intentional at worst but this is really irresponsible for them to keep caving i want to repeat to you they are in control of the house of representatives they have leverage they have power they can pass their own stimulus bill easily $2,000 a month, scream about it on every single cable news show. They have their own propaganda outlet, MSNBC. Badger Republicans for not voting on your clean bill to give every single American 2000 bucks a month, no questions asked. But what are they doing instead? Nancy Pelosi is going on late night television shows bragging about how both of her $11,000 a piece refrigerators have been restocked with ice cream. That's what they're doing. At a certain point, the left needs to acknowledge the likely reality that they're not just incompetent. They're not just really, really bad at politics. They don't know how to play chess. They're doing this on purpose. They are willfully throwing these fights with Republicans because they're content with the status quo. Economically speaking, they're aligned with Republicans. There may be a lot of disagreements with Republicans, at least when it comes to rhetoric, on social justice issues, but on economic issues, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, they're simpatico. So it's not like they don't have the tools that they need to fight. It's not like they don't have the leverage to pressure Republicans to give us a little bit more than crumbs, or at least more crumbs. They're doing this on purpose. You can't just keep assuming that they're incompetent. Are they incompetent? Yes. But they're doing this on purpose. They're losing on purpose. They're fighting as well as a boxer who shows up to a match who's paid to throw the fight. So stop assuming automatically that they're incompetent, even though it's really easy to do that because they're just so painfully, seemingly idiotic. They're doing this on purpose. They know how to play politics. They play politics hardcore with the left. But when it comes to the right, getting any sort of policy concessions that would benefit the American people, like tangible goods in the hands of Americans, money... They're not doing that. They're rolling over and they're dying. And it's just, people have to realize what's happening. You have to understand that they're also people who must be defeated. It's not just Republicans. You have to fight Democrats as well because they're clearly not operating on your behalf. They're not doing that. 
There's no other logical explanation for their behavior. They're not fighting for you. And that's on purpose. That seems intentional at this point. It's just time to people realize what's happening and not accept the gaslighting as we usually do.